Uh, welcome to iSchool. Uh, I know some of you are not uh, iSchool uh, related, but welcome anyway. And also I'm happy to learn that there are some librarians or uh, library students uh, in the audience. Uh, I'm also very happy to know that. My name is Jen Chen and I'm the, uh, uh, the professor at uh, iSchool and I'm also uh, the program director for the Master of Library Information Science. Um, so my uh, research is in metadata. So it's, this is my favorite topic, especially when it's related to analytics or uh, data science. So um, I'm just go, going to dive into uh, what I'm trying to talk about today. Um, metadata is, and then for, for those of you who uh, do not have a library information science background, I need to give you a little bit explanation about what it is, what it looks like, why do we need it, and what it can do, uh, and things like that, you know, just make all of us um, on the same page so we can move on to talk about analytics. And the analytics uh, I'm going to talk about here is a little bit different from what Professor uh, Jeff Hemsley talked about. We are, th there's not so much about um, you know, rows of rows of data, but the data has, uh, the data have different format. Okay, let's. <laughs> okay. Um, so metadata, what is it? And, you know, if, if you go back uh, 20, I think uh, more than 20 years ago, people will tell you, Metadata is data about data. That's simple. Yes, it is true, but that's not the whole story. Um, the full uh, definition about metadata is the structured or semi-structured description of information um, and or data objects in the form of catalogs, indexes, uh, indexing databases, and metadata repositories and metadata is everywhere. Uh, let, let's see. So why do we need it? Uh, well, whenever you go look for something on the web, you are using metadata. So first thing, you know, when you are in high school or in, um, you know, in, in college or even at the job, uh, on, on your job, you will constantly search for information. And this is a uh, SEO libraries interface, very familiar, right? So, and all those data, like, you know, the each fields that you can fill in some data is those are metadata. And the other thing is metadata is also very common in our life, you know, entertainment, or you want to learn something, you go to, every time you go to YouTube, you are using metadata, you know, to find, to select a category of, you know, particular uh, kind of video to watch. Um, oops. Okay. Um, even, you want to buy something, Amazon is full of all kinds of metadata. So, um, so because metadata is so, uh, is like everywhere, right? And, but that's for search, for use, for, you know, facing the public. Um, it becomes indispensable when you need to look for something on the web or in the library or on the YouTube or anywhere, as long as it involves information system. But on the other side, libraries or businesses or government, um, all these entities or organizations also uh, need in metadata to manage information, information resources. Um, 
the, you know, whoops, the diagram, well, the picture there, the picture there uh, shows all kinds of information resources, but actually they are much more uh, than um, showing in this uh, photo, in this uh, image. So metadata, when we use it to manage information resources, it answers questions like, you know, who created, because we want to credit the authors or the creators of the data or uh, publication or, you know, an artwork. Um, so who created, when it was created, and what is it about, you know, about some topic or about a person or about uh, a literary work? Um, what is it? Is it a video, audio, or print material or archive or sculpture? Um, you know, and who owns the right? You know, when, when a book published, the author may not have copyright because it has transferred to the publisher. So, um, and how can it be accessed, viewed? Uh, you know, did you need uh, some technology or device in order to view the content of the information object? And how is it related to other relevant uh, objects? You know, a monument um, may have architecture sketches from different times, uh, you know, different uh, design stage. And then at different times when it's finished and it has been, you know, uh, renovated um, and, and all those have been documented by different images. So when you're creating metadata to describe a monument, are uh, you describing the, the uh, design sketch uh, or sketches? or the images that, you know, um, capturing a certain time uh, where, when the uh, monument, it, you know, is in. So they, there's much more and metadata can describe us small as organisms, uh, DNA sequences, and as big as buildings, um, architecture, so it range everything in between. So you can see how uh, important metadata uh, is. So metadata in, has always, you know, been an important content foundation for libraries, archives, and the museums, and, and any organization that deals with documents, you know, all the uh, kinds of information resources. So in libraries, um, you know, you, you see the uh, public display of a record for, this is for um, Obama's book, uh, Audacity. You see the, you know, it's very common, but at the back, the record is actually presenting in that way. And who knows what 100 represents, right? Who knows what 245 means, but, every of these number has some meaning coded behind. So this is kind of, this is proprietary data format. So move into the current, the, the uh, 21st century and metadata has been transferred or transformed into linked data. So what does linked data mean? I think there are Oh, I can give you a whole class, you know, course to explain, you know, what uh, linked data means, what technology is involved in encoding languages involved and how to design, how to model those, but I'll skip all that. Um, so when the metadata records, the same, uh, same metadata for the same book, when it's in linked data format, the public view you can sense the difference from the previous slide, what you have seen from the SEO library uh, catalog. Um, and then you can see the, you know, subject terms are linked and then it has very clear categories. And in the system, and this is only one uh, format of the record. Uh, and in linked data uh, world, you don't say things like 
record. Everything is a statement. The so-called statement is like subject, predicate, object, which means the book has a name, has a title, that's audacity. And the book has a creator, Obama, and the, well, no, not, not his, <laughs> it's about, subject is about, uh, uh, author is actually somebody else. So uh, the book has topic, Obama, oh, uh, has a topic. The topic is about person, the person is Obama. So you have all these, everything can be expressed in a triple. So this is JSON a format. And then the record can also link the data. Uh, when the record is in linked data format, it can be expressed in XML, RDF, X, uh, XML format. So if you uh, don't understand what RDF is, um, there's another course you can take in LIS, uh, which is a 681 metadata course. Uh, you will understand what RDF resource, uh, resource description framework. So, um, so there's a whole um, you know, set of uh, foundational knowledge behind it. And then this format can have like seven or eight different Java, JavaScript, and, and they can be uh, expressed in many other formats. So what does it mean by metadata as linked data? Uh, it means it is structured data and it is entity-based. So in the past, you know, when you describe certain information objects, you based on that object, no matter who created it, you just, you know, faithfully document, you know, every bit of information into the record. But when it comes to linked data, this conception has totally changed. So the, um, the metadata now dis, uh, focus on entities, persons, um, and uh, events, publications, data sets, and, you know, artworks, and you name it. And then when, and then folks on also entities don't exist uh, in isolation. They are related in different types of relations. So another important aspect in metadata is to identify relationship types. So, um, so they, there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, in uh, linked data, uh, that will, you know, I can go on, um, but today I'm just going to focus on, give you the very basic. So as linked data, each entity like, you know, is going to be um, you globally uniquely identified. So this uh, globally unique identifier uh, has using the standard uh, web standard, um, developed by some organization. Um, right now, the, the major one is the, uh, the H, uh, HTTP protocol uh, kind of uh, identifier. And then it's the data, all these entity-based, uh, you know, um, record or statement is in a subject relation object triple style. And as far as what th that means, you know, and triples can be linked to form a graph uh, network, that is. So now we come to the very interesting uh, part of the metadata. So linked data uh, briefly, you know, briefly um, describe uh, well, briefly say we can summarize this. Uh, it's a it, no. It's available on the web, and sometimes people also call web of data um, and semantic web. So you have heard these names, and linked data is the foundation for the uh, semantic web, and available as a structured data. I mentioned that earlier, and also readable by a machine. So linked data is primarily um, developed or established 
for consumption by computer systems, by computers, available in a non-proprietary format. So all the format you see like JSON, uh, RDF, XML, and uh, OWL, OWL, and all those different formats, um, or N triples, and all these are non-proprietary. That means you have better interoperability. Metadata from one system can talk to uh, metadata in another system and uh, um, expressed using open um, W3C standards. And that is uh, a very important and linked to other data on the web. Whoops. Okay, so there are a lot of challenges uh, in this process of transition from traditional metadata records to linked data statements or triples. And, uh, and this or, or to uh, linked data semantic web. And the issues, uh, I'm, this is not a, a exhaustive list of uh, issues, but I only picked up some um, important ones. And I call it the perpetual ambiguous author names. So because you know you probably notice in a lot of indexing databases or catalog systems, they don't usually provide full name of authors. They have last name and abbreviate the first name and the middle initial. And what if people, you know, different people have identical names, identical last name, identical initials? Then you run into a problem. You know, can we tell who's who? Or can we tell this identical name actually represent a hundred different people? So uh, these ambiguities can cause serious problems in information uh, search. Or if you use this data to do research, you can cause you know, um, all kinds of problems because it will affect the reliability of your research conclusion and, and so on and so forth. So name disambiguation has been a subject of uh, research in both computer science, information science, information retrieval, and people have used uh, all kinds of algorithms to, do, to detect author names and to disambiguate author names. So uh, that is a, you know, a great area in metadata for research. And metadata is never ready usable, readily usable for uh, analysis. Well, if you want to use uh, metadata to analyze, for example, in one of my uh, research projects, we use uh, the metadata from the GenBank um, repository. GenBank is the international or is a, a data repository established from 1982 and runs till now, and it stores DNA sequences from you know, biological, biomedical research projects. And especially, you know, it's very important, especially in the recent pandemic, and you will see you know, those um, DNA sequences for the COVID uh, virus um, has you know, increased, uh, has a grow grown uh, very fast in the last two years. And also, uh, you know, the reason that we can have vaccine, uh, vaccines developed quickly, you know, we can attribute this to uh, the DNA sequence, sequencing project. Um, anyway, so we, uh, this pro our uh, GeneBank metadata analytics project, uh, collected the metadata about the gene uh, DNA sequence, sequences, you know, who submitted, when it was submitted, and what is the uh, taxonomy lineage uh, for the DNA sequence and, and what references associated with this uh, DNA sequence submission. And so we, we are not, we are no biomedical researchers, but we study uh, the metadata to, um, trying to see how scientific collaboration networks evolved from early 1980s until 
current days, present days. So, um, you know, of course, during this project, we spent a lot of time to parsing the data, uh, cleaning the data, transform the data, and generate uh, the data sets that we need. For example, one of uh, the data sets we need is uh, Edgelist. So, so there's a lot of these. But so the um, it's not ready. For, you know, when you collect this, you have to go through a lot of uh, cleaning in order to uh, make the data analyzable and difficult to use. Um, the code is very difficult to re reuse. So often end up re always um, re um, you know reinvent the wheel a lot of times. And uh, limitation of current metadata uh, structures is, you know, a lot of libraries, especially national libraries, are uh, converting their legacy mark uh, cataloging data into a linked data format. And if you go to Library of Congress uh, catalogs, uh, you know, the, the website um, and other national libraries website, you will find many of them have already been converted to linked data. So uh, now we, we understand what's the landscape, you know, look, look like for metadata. And then we'll talk about the analytics. I cannot cover all of uh, the analytics uh, aspects, but I'll give you a couple of examples to demonstrate how metadata may be used to, for analysis, uh, for research, as well as for learning. So one of the main, main concepts in this process is, okay, okay, is to, uh, you know, from display to analysis. So I'm going uh, and making sense of the data. So let me go through this. So uh, in order to uh, conduct metadata analytics, we want to uh, have data infrastructure, which we already have and semantic infrastructure we already also have. And then for uh, conducting metadata analytics, that's uh, a, another a very broad area. So for the name disambiguation solutions, you know, you see ORCID, Research ID, VF, and all these are the solutions uh, developed for deal with the name uh, ambiguation problem. So I'll skip this one, but I'm going, I think I want to spend two minutes to show this project. So if you want to, uh, you know, test this one, this is a, uh, a news press, or no, uh, I think it's a called uh, press archive uh, for the 20th, uh, 20th century. And this is a huge archive and in Germany. So basically they digitized all, the whole uh, archive collection and then they um, you know, make the, their data available on Wikidata. Ah, I'm having problems, okay. So this, this Wikidata, the Wikidata is, is, we can call it a knowledge base. And Wikidata basically follow that subject predicate and then object uh, triple structure. So if you have these, you know, if you know how to write the queries and you can test it. And uh, I would highly encourage you to follow this link to play with it. Because once you do this and it, out of, once you have the query in there and then you have the, uh, uh, those query builder, and then if you click that run button, you will get the visualization of, you know, the, the metadata result for the, you know, for um, the persons involved in this archival collection. Uh, I think this is uh, a group of economists uh, the place where they were born. And also on the left, if you click uh, the top, you will see a list of uh, different views. You can view in bar chart, pie chart, bubble chart, and, and different uh, presentation of the data content. 
So uh, they are also, um, you can also see the code. So the, this is the last slide. Um, entity management is an important um, you know, transition which is going on right now in libraries, uh, archives and uh, museums. Um, and the other one is a uh, shift from display to analysis uh, and uh, 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 help researchers to make sense of data by doing all kinds of you know, text mining, um, uh, network analysis, modeling, metadata, and a lot of uh, things. So I'll, I'll stop here. Um, questions? Yeah, so there's a question um, about objectivity when it comes to descriptive metadata on e-commerce platforms, for example, a book being labeled as a bestseller um, and ensuring that that wasn't just, you know, used for promotional purposes. Oh, that's that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is something uh, I think uh, uh, us information professionals, we always want to keep in mind that, um, you know, whatever data analysis you, you do, you want to um, maintain neutral, not, um, you know, um, sometimes you may accidentally, you know, do some advertising involuntarily for some commercial entities. Uh, so that's that's why we really want to be uh, careful when we uh, use those commercial examples. Yeah. Anyone in here have a question? So there, there is another one in the chat. Um, they said, from a business per, from a business perspective, what other areas of application um, may be? In addition, you were talking about a medical DNA case, I think. Um. I think like many, like several slides back. Uh, yeah. And they just asked about what, um, from a business perspective, some other areas of application. In you mean metadata analytics? Yes. Um, this is kind of hard to, to say because um, it, first it depends on what kind of metadata you have and the volume of the data you have and the format. And in, in business settings, um, metadata, uh, I would imagine if you are in, I mean, in, um, yeah, it, it's, it's difficult to, to tell. Um, but I think uh, if you infuse the idea about linked data and that will make your data better structured because you know, you're no longer um, focus on describing one particular type of product, but you you describing uh, you know entity based and then relations between different ones and and I think in um, Amazon's case uh, it does have make that kind of connection like if you buy this one you may also like to buy you know these kind of products that that can be you know really can can be modeled. Um, using the linked data uh, style, but um, I think in in many cases um, the data structure, data model, as well as the nature of the data, uh, really um, you know play important role for whether it's you know whether it's feasible to conduct metadata analytics. Uh, or um, what kinds of analytics you need to do. So I think in, um, yeah, it, it's, it's case by case. I, it's hard to give a overall, um, you know, suggestion. And then just one more and then it's 6.02. Um, what is the major source that they may find for meta analytics? Um, they said, are we using a data crawling tech or are they purchasing it from a third party? Oh, um, that's a good uh, question because in um, it really depends on what kinds of metadata analytics you want to do because there are many freely open access data repositories that you can uh, scrape metadata from. For example, 
uh, the National Center for Biotechnology uh, Information uh, called NCBI is a center under National Library of Medicine. Uh, NCBI hosts, I don't know, at least um, more, um, several tens of databases. And these, all these databases are open access and they have FTP you know, site, you can go to get the data. Um, there's also um, uh, open access data repository called data.gov. And if you want to use data sources, uh, you know, in those places, you can go to, and it is, it's the broad categories include agriculture, uh, you know, um, health uh, care, and many other, you know, many others. So, I think, um, and many libraries, I mean, major libraries, for example, Library of Congress, open, you know, they, their whole linked data set can be downloaded. And the name authority, subject authority databases can all be downloaded for free. So there are a lot of resources, data, metadata resources uh, that can be used for analytics prop, um, you know, projects.